of the Committee on Homeland Security. The gentleman from Texas is recognized for four minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The resolution before us here today, in my judgment, is dangerous and should be defeated. For months, Congress and the American people have demanded a strategy from this administration to defeat and destroy ISIS, a barbaric and growing terrorist empire that threatens not only the people of Iraq and Syria, but also the United States. Today, the Secretary of Defense testified that, quote, ISIS is a threat to the homeland because of its avowed intentions to strike and recruit in this country. ISIS must and will be dealt a lasting defeat, end of quote. But this president does not have a strategy to accomplish this. We continue to fight the terrorists with one hand tied behind our back. And the only thing worse would be to disengage completely, which is exactly what this resolution would do. I recently led a bipartisan delegation to the Middle East where I visited Iraq, ground zero in the fight against ISIS a week before Ramadi was overtaken by ISIS. And I spoke with Prime Minister Abadi. And unfortunately, the current strategy, in my opinion, relies too heavily on the Shia militia as a proxy of Iran to defeat ISIS. And we now have over 3,000 American service members there to advise and assist the Iraqi national military. But the president has restricted our ability to take the fight to the enemy because he's more committed to his campaign pledge to end the wars in the Middle East than he is to ending ISIS. The president has, in fact, made the situation more dangerous. His failure to negotiate a status of forces agreement and the complete failure of Prime Minister Maliki to govern effectively created the vacuum that ISIS now fills. In Syria, a civil war continues to rage. There, too, ISIS has filled the void. Islamist fanatics from more than 100 countries have traveled overseas to fight with groups like ISIS and al-Qaeda. Thousands of these jihadists carry Western passports and can exploit security gaps to return to the West and the homeland where they plot attacks against the United States. Meanwhile, Iran is actively engaged in both Iraq and Syria, embedding Shia fighters in the Sunni communities in Iraq and doing Assad's bidding in Syria. Prime Minister Netanyahu recently told our delegation that Iran and ISIS are competing for the crown of militant Islam. This resolution would ensure that Iran and ISIS will continue to dominate in the region while thousands of innocent civilians suffer and die. Just ask the Yazidi Christians in Iraq if they support leaving security in the hands of ISIS and the Iranians. Thousands of Yazidis would have been killed last summer if it weren't for U.S. airstrikes to repel an ISIS advancement against them. Nothing could be more irresponsible or damaging to our interests. And let me say this in response to those who say this is a vote to urge an AUMF vote. I, I personally support a strong AUMF and authorization, but one to defeat and destroy ISIS. When we met the White House counsel, he presented a very different AUMF that would restrict further the president's current abilities to destroy and defeat ISIS. I cannot support that. And this resolution, with all due respect, is the wrong way to accomplish the goal of defeating ISIS through a strong authorized use of military force. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. The gentleman from Texas yields. The gentleman from California reserves. The chair recognizes the gentleman from New York. Yeah, I now <laughs> yield uh, two minutes to my uh, New York uh, friend and colleague, Mr. Nadler. 